Welcome to Money Making Conversation. I am your host, Rashawn McDonald. It is time to stop reading other people's success stories. I say that every time I start my show and start writing your own. I always tell people, leave with your gifts or your passion and don't let your age, friends, family, or coworkers stop you from planning or living your dreams. The interviews I bring on Money Making Conversation are people who are successful, so we learn the secrets of their success. My next guest I've had on the show before, I met him during the pandemic. I'm going to tell you, watch Netflix. He's Rodney Scott. Rodney Scott is <laughs> James Beard award-winning chef, pit master, and founder of Rodney Scott's Whole Hog Barbecue. Operating restaurants in South Carolina and Alabama, Rodney has continued to expand his acclaimed brand of South Carolina-style barbecue and has been featured on popular TV shows, including the Today Show and Netflix series Chef's Table Barbecue, among others. There are plans to expand into Atlanta. We're going to talk about that because, you know, you come down to Atlanta, you know I got to roll down there and get me some fixings. I, you know, it's barbecue, then there's fixings, because I'm from Houston, Texas. I know about them fixings. As well as two more locations in Alabama this year as well. He's here to talk about his first book, cookbook. I got it on my desk. Rodney Scott's World of Barbecue. Recipes and perspectives from the legendary pit master. That's my man right here. He's on the show. Please welcome to Money Make Conversation, Rodney Scott. How you doing, Rodney? Man, I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> pleasure to speak to you again should i say and uh we've we've survived so far in this pandemic man we're, we're gonna get past this hey rod you know man the, we, our first call man i just saw you on netflix man and it was uh it was a it was a interview of, of just joy because uh I got a slice of, of a, of a it, it humanized you, you know, you know, you know, you people in the kitchen, they, they, they chef, they barbecue and they, 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 some of them talk noise, some of them are humble and, and just watching your story, man, how, what, how, what was the impact of your appearance on that Netflix series, Chef's Table Barbecue on Netflix last year? Man, that, that, that appearance on Chef's Table was a huge impact on our business, um, a huge impact on on our staff as as well as me as a owner co-founder uh a human being period you know it's it, it's been an amazing ride it it, it kind of made me go to the back porch sit down and to suck it all in you know take it in mm -hmm. slowly and enjoy the moment because a lot of people they skip over it and i wanted to savor every moment that i could it, it changed my life completely well, it changed my life from a standpoint of just watching an African-American man, um, because, you know, it's really interesting how we look at business and how we look at what is success and what you can do, because you're an entrepreneur, you're a businessman. And sometimes people yes. see, they don't see that lane. They just see you as a barbecue guy, a cook or a chef, but you run a business, you employ people. And so you can get stereotyped when people say as a career, this is a career for you. This is a you know, that you're making money. You're you 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 got boys. You have a beautiful wife, and you have you're sustaining a, a very positive lifestyle. And it's a career for you. So, do you get caught up in the stereotypes of people thinking, "Oh, he's just a barbecue guy"? <laughs> I do get caught up as just being a barbecue guy, and I find it very amusing because people prejudge and underestimate what you know because of what they think they know about. You. Mm -hmm. So. It, it, it's, it's kind of amusing to me for them to see different. Uh, for example, I walked in the restaurant one day and he thought I was cutting in line. It's like, where is this guy going? <laughs> and then once they saw me go like behind the counter and everybody started saying, hey, Rodney, it was a totally different look. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I find, I find it a little bit amusing. And, and they kind of understand that you're not just a guy shoveling coals, that you're trying to grow a business, you're trying to grow a brand. Um, you're, you're trying to give people opportunities through employment. They, they, they kind of see you a little different. And uh, for me, that's been a great experience. I, again, I find it a little amusing when they just think one thing and find out so much more. Well, you know, in watching that Netflix series, your father saw you a little bit different because he you had ideas and he didn't want to change. Yeah. And so and it wasn't until his illness that you was able to start implementing some of your ideas, which has led to the great success that you have now. Talk about that transition of being another person, because that was his brand. That was his business. But you can get stuck yeah. in your ways of saying, I've done this all the time. It works for me. Why should I change? And it's, I guess it's opened your eyes to being able to for new ideas and to listen to other people as well. Correct. Correct. You know, all of that's been a, a, a an experience and and a learning experience to see how my dad behaved and how to carry myself trying to show people what we're doing and how we're doing it. And people get stuck in their ways. I get that. You know, they feel like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But also I've learned that don't get so stuck in your way that you can't hear other ideas 
or hear other, you know, possibilities of adjustments to what you do. So uh, f- for me, it's, it's been a learning experience going through what I went through with my father to learn how to carry myself better than I've been carrying myself or the way that he carried himself with new ideas or creations. Well, you know, the thing about it is that he gave you a start. And that's that's the and that I guess that's the blessing of you know you're, you're, you're having a family that was in business because we as African Americans you know we don't even look at it as a, as anything is passed down to us and this business was passed down to you it was something you learned but early on in life you know one of my favorite stories at Netflix was when we graduated from high school and that girl said all you're gonna do is just go down and cut up some hogs <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and guess what yeah. that's what you did midnight you went down there and cut up some yeah. hogs and, but again that's a stereotype correct yeah that is that is a stereotype you know people underestimate you she she didn't see me doing anything else but just that. And uh, once she heard and saw so many different things happening, it was she was amazed. And I don't think she even remembers saying that to me because she sent me some congratulation notes a couple of times. And I'm like, I wonder, do you remember telling me that that day? And I, she's always been that that extra influence to I'm going to show you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you and everybody else who thinks like you. Mm-hmm. And to this day, that's that's my thought. You, you're you not going to tell me what I'm going to do. You're not going to limit me on my dreams or the things that I, I or my goals, period. Well, you know, I, and that's what we're talking about, goals. When you come on Money Making Conversations, so many people have dreams, Rodney. So many people have aspirations of greatness, uh, grandeur, as they say. And But yeah. but, then it, but that hard work is what you mentioned there. And you have, you have sons. How do you implement that approach to you know, they see you because, brother, in the end, them coals are hot and them barbecue pits are warm. brother. And their long hours turned out to get to this food that everybody savors or comes back and lines up for. How do they look? How do you how do you teach them hard work? But also they live in it. Like I told my daughter, I said, you, you've never known not living in air conditioning. You know, you you came, you were born in yeah. a hospital. You came home in an air conditioning car. You you've known air conditioning all your life. So then your boys have known that same air conditioning. So because we know where the first, you know, pitmaster place was located at. So talk to them about your sons and we're going to get to the book after that. Yeah. You know, I got uh, three boys and um, the the youngest lives here with me at home and the other two are older, uh, 25 and 18. One's in Atlanta there and another one's still in Hemingway, South Carolina. And the youngest one here with me, 12 years old, just yesterday, I was telling him, I was like, look, here's what we got to do to get to that great burger. You got first, we got to make sure the grill's clean. You got to understand that there's labor involved. You got to get everything going before you enjoy the food. And I try to implement to him that it doesn't just fall in front of you on the table. You got to start. You got to got to put in some time, some effort, some extra work. You can't play video games and all of a sudden come downstairs at 545 and and be ready to eat. And uh, I, I try to teach him the hard work. The fact that when I'm away from home, that I'm not on vacation, you know, we're trying to build things and I try to teach him how to be a better man than I I could ever. Well, you know, uh, you're a great man and you look good in the suit, too. They showed Netflix. (laughs) Don't don't, don't, don't fool you. This young man walking around in the suit. Suit fits him just right. Fits him just right. Good, handsome brother. But let's get to this cookbook here. Rodney Scott, World of Barbecue. Because soon they they, you know, I'm big time, Rodney. They sent me a book. Okay, sent me a book. So as soon as the book arrived, it, it arrived UPS, all right? I immediately went to the cornbread. I, I go to the glossary all the time. And I, I said, this boy, he's a country boy. This country boy. Because I go to your, I went to your restaurant and I saw cornbread, the banana pudding, I saw collard greens. So I said, he better have the, the cornbread now. Boy, I went to the cornbread section, man, that, that honey butter topping that you put on your cornbread. I made this the same day I got this book. And uh, because my wife, I mean, here's the funny thing about it, Rodney. I don't use cast iron skillet. My wife always, you need to learn how to use cast iron skillet. So she, <laughs> so here's the funny part about it. So I took a picture of when I made the uh, the cornbread, but right before, and I put the put the honey butter on top, and and I cleaned up this cast iron skillet. And I, it was in the background of my photo. So all uh-huh. she saw was, I see that cast iron skillet behind you. 
I guess she went in our house and found it. Huh? Because that made the difference, man. That cast iron skillet. Talk about this cornbread, man. Like I said, uh, I posted it on my social media, got a great response. I'm going to post some more stuff, like the collard greens. I'm going to go there and get that blueberry cornbread. We're going to talk about a lot of little menus and little recipes in there. But let's talk about that cornbread first off, because that was my love. Because I'm going to tell you something, Rodney. I get excited because I'm an old school guy. I take some buttermilk. And see, buttermilk comes in this cornbread, so it's a win-win for me. Because normally I take yeah. the, I take some buttermilk, put in a half a glass, sweeten it up with sugar, then I crumble me some cornbread inside. That is outstanding for me. So I was happy, happy, happy on this. But tell us about this recipe and the cast iron skillet. Man, so let me tell you about that that recipe. That cornbread takes me back to my childhood with my grandma. My grandma used to make that cornbread. She used to use Jiffy Mix back in the day. Mm -hmm. And that cornbread used to be sweet and, and so tasty and thick. And, you know, back then, she used to sometimes give us a little bit of uh, uh, cane patch syrup. And it was this old school syrup that she would kind of put on the side every now and again. And man... You're talking about a good night at grandma's house. Right. That'd be some good eating. And I wanted that cornbread so badly. And we got with our chef, head chef, and, and we talked. And I told him, I said, man, grandma made this cornbread that was amazing. We need to develop this thing together. And, and we came up with that flavor. And before I tell you any more about that cornbread, I got to tell you, my mom, my aunt, and my cousin, who's 10 years older than me, came in. And they tasted that cornbread. And they said, where did you get grandma's recipe? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... When I know that they were satisfied with it, I said, yeah, we were hitting home. We were hitting close to home. And, you know, a cast iron skillet, cooking that cornbread in a cast iron skillet is a lot easier in a sense because the heat is even all over. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, and that thing just bakes right in there, man. All that flavor is in there. And you add that honey butter to it. Oh, man. You... You don't know what you're missing until you had that cornbread. Oh, okay. I, I, I got oh, it. Oh, man. Okay, I'm just telling you something. Then, then, you, then you flip the script on the brother here. The Roscoe's Blueberry Cornmeal Pound Cake. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I know you said, yes. Rich, this boy crazy. He's just going through this book, just making everything. I'm telling you something, man. We're going to talk about, then I'm going to get to the collard greens. But let's talk about the Roscoe's blueberry. I had never heard that in my life, man. Because, you know, some people use that cornmeal, like you do, cornmeal and flour, and just make the cornbread, yeah. all right? And it gives you that cake-like, because people eat it, they go, this tastes like cake. Well, you got flour in it with the cornmeal. But then you flip yes. the script, man, with these blueberries. Come on now. How did you think of that? Well, we were in uh, Birmingham, and Roscoe worked for us at the, with us at the Birmingham location. And one day we were just sitting there talking about it. He said, man, this thing is almost like cake. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, man. It reminds you of that strawberry uh, uh, shortcake you used to get sometimes. And he was like, man, what about blueberries? He said, you like color blue? I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> Before you know it, man, I said, just make it. Then let me know what you think. And he did. And lo and behold, man, I was like, yeah, we're going to put this in the book. We're going to share this with the world. Let them know that this cornbread can come in several, several different ways. One of them is going to be blueberry. Okay, and, and there you have it. You know, you blueberry, know? blueberries are sneaky, man. Sneaky good, cause like blueberry pancakes, I love to death. You know, I'm not a guy that just, yeah. I can't just eat a blueberry. You know, but you put it in, you put it in this cornbread, you put it in this uh, pancakes, it's outstanding. And so, 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 you know, the thing about you, Rodney, is that you're a visionary. Let's go and be real about it. Let's, you know, cause you, you <laughs> take an idea and you expand it, because your father had a vision. But you expanding on that vision. Now you expanding it into other states and expanding your brand. What are you trying to do? Take over the world, barbecue man? What you trying to do, Rodney? Trying to be a barbecue king? Yes, sir. I, I, I am trying to take over the world. I'm trying to spread the love everywhere. Because mm -hmm. whenever you find a barbecue, you find people in a good mood, people having a party, people enjoying themselves. So I was like, why not spread this love all over the world as far as we can? You know, right. if, it, if it's me, it's absolutely great. If it's somebody else, it's, it's just as good. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's, let's put it in as many places as we can. And every time I think about, should I do it in this state? Should I try it in that state? And I, I say to myself, why not? Just, just let's do it. Mm -hmm. And, and my goal is to spread, spread this love, this Rodney Scott whole hog love all over the world. And, and I hadn't stopped dreaming yet. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep on dreaming. But the, the beauty of you now is that you, you're a celebrity. Okay, uh, you know, I, well, you walk down the street, people recognize you walking, especially when you walk in your establishment. They know, that's Rodney, that's Rodney. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so being a celebrity means you have a brand, social media, you post things, people engage with that. Talk about that, 
you know, and that means other people have, everybody has a bright idea for you now. You know, back in high school, they might have no idea for you at all. Everybody has a bright idea for you because you were just that, 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 that's Rodney Hill and that barbecue stand. He ain't about nothing. But now everybody got a great idea for you. How do you slice through that? Tell us about your team, your team that keeps you focused, that keeps you organized and keeps you on point. Oh, man, I got to tell you about my team. My team is amazing. and We got age groups that's even better. You know, Nick Bahak is, is my, my partner in this thing. You know, we came up with the idea. We sat at the table. He was like, let's create a Rodney Scott skin. I'm like, man, you crazy. And <laughs> little did you know that I would ever do it like this. And, and we decided to do it. And along with Nick, his son, Nicholas, and my man, Paul Yek, our head chef, we, we put our heads together and we just kept coming up with these thoughts and ideas. And they helped to keep me humble to not worry about every little thing. You know, when I say, hey, man, I got to run over to such, such place and check this, they'll say, I'll do that for you. We got that. You take your time and focus on what you're doing. So they made it well-rounded for me. Uh, Nick has this thing he called a balancing wheel, where you have yourself, your family, your finance, your business, your brand, and you got to balance that thing out. You know, you got to stay healthy in order to stay in this whole operation and, and enjoy it at the same time. So, we all make sure that we balance ourselves, our personal lives and everything together. And this team that I have, they make sure that all of that's perfect for me, that that my background with the restaurant and my personal life don't ever, you know, one doesn't ever take over the other. Right. So they, they've been super great with that. You know, it's really important that we talk about this, you know, and I thank you again for coming on Money Making Conversation. I'm talking to Rodney, this guy. He is the king of barbecue. I know I, I got my boy Kevin Bledsoe in LA. You know, he ain't riding this guy. This is my boy right riding this guy. He out there populating the states, the cities with the with the whole hog. The whole hog. Now tell us, what is the whole hog? Come on now, Rodney. You brag about it. I see it on TV. I can tell you right now. I'm not messing with that whole hog. Tell us about the whole hog experience, why it is on fire, why it's popular when they go to these uh these barbecue shows, these competitions. Talk about the whole hog and then talk about South Carolina style. What makes that different? You know, that whole hog is is we we like to describe it as a difference you can taste. And you know, you go to certain restaurants, you'll see that they have shoulders or hams. And that's not the whole hog. When you get uh the ham, the loin, belly meat, and some shoulder meat all mixed together, and you put it in a bite, you you, you got that whole hog right in the palm of your hands. You're mm -hmm. tasting every corner, every cut of that whole animal, and it's a different taste. And it is a difference you can taste. Once you taste the whole hog and you go back to a shoulder, you, you kind of understand what I'm trying to explain. And the way that we did it in South Carolina, we did the whole hog with vinegar and pepper. Right. See, I grew up on the southeastern part of the state, closer to the coast. And vinegar pepper is the thing over there. And, you know, we use the white vinegar, the crushed pepper, pepper flakes, as some people will call it, uh, black pepper, cayenne, some sugar. That's basically the sauce that we, we put together in that part of the state. And in South Carolina, man, you can go to Hemingway right now and, and say, I need a whole hog cook. And 20 people might jump up and say, I can do that. That's what we did in my area. That's what we did growing up. And, you know, I, I I've traveled in different places and people say, how do you cook a whole animal? I think they're amazed by it. And mm -hmm. my whole thing is, look, if you can't do it, I'll show you. Let me, let me do it for you. And before you know it, they find out how many people can eat from it. How many ideas can go around it. You can put grits and pork together. You can build a taco with this thing. You can, I mean, you got all these options with this, with this whole hog. So it's always been a treat and a, and a big thing to do in my area. And when other people see it from different regions, man, they're, they're amazed by it. Well, first of all, I'm amazed that because I, I, I'm from Houston, Texas. So I got a, a nephew. He has a barbecue stand, real popular called Big Six Barbecue in Houston, Texas. Talented kid, makes his own sausage. And, um, and, I, and I tell him to follow you. I tell him, what my man Rodney, watch what he does. It's, and he's, a, he's doing very well in the Houston market. Now, but back to you in regards to what I see you do, you expanding. Now, in the Atlanta market, now you skipped all over and went to Birmingham. You know, you went from South Carolina, skipped over Georgia, and then Alabama. Now, now we sit down here in Atlanta now. I'm kind of wondering when I'm going to get the whole hog experience, when I could just drive to it, not just order via mail or UPS or FedEx. Tell us what Atlanta experience. Talk, talk to us now, brother. When you coming, right? Atlanta, 
Atlanta, I'm trying to get to you as soon as possible. I've been trying to get there since last year, but here we, you know, here's a new year where we're coming. We're a lot closer, hopefully by this summer. We're counting on July, if we're lucky, to have things open at 668 Metropolitan Parkway. Um, the building is looking great. Uh, most of the construction is in. Um, we're, we're trying to get the windows in, the furniture going. And those guys are out there. They were, they were getting it. And this was last week when I checked on them. So they're making some progress. So we're trying to get that whole hog to Atlanta at least by the summer, hopefully no later than July. Now, now, can one order things on the mail or through FedEx or do you ship? Talk, talk, tell us about the whole operation now. I know you're based in, in South Carolina and Alabama, but can we order, go online and order things, get delivered to our house? Uh, you, can, you can order our food online. Mm -hmm. uh, not our food itself, I'm sorry, but our rubs mm -hmm. and our sauces are available online now. Our T-shirts and our, some hats is what we have available online right now. We're trying to work on that process of seeing about getting the food kind of where you can order it and we ship it to you overnight. But I want to make sure, though, you know, a lot of times that when, when you send your food out, you want it to be right. You don't want it to be shipped out there and, it ain't, and you're not ready for it. Right. So. Right. You know, that's very true because it's like the experience because. You know, it's a lot of people microwave your, your your barbecue, you know. Oh, it's tough, you know. Yeah. And because and, you got to tell people how to do it. You know, you got to put it in the oven, put a little water underneath it, you know, make sure yeah. it stays juicy and stuff like that. But you 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 send it across, you know, they're going to microwave. They're going to zap it. They're going to zap it. <laughs> then they're going to go get some of that barbecue salt that they got from Kroger's. Not saying barbecue, you know, that ain't your salt. Next thing you know, yeah. they got that on there. So you try to maintain the right stuff because of the fact that that sauce. Now, I'm going to tell you, right before my interview, I dropped in a, a baked potato. See, I'm just telling you, I just love this book. This book <laughs> he, he has a book, it's the, the Loaded Baked Potato. I've dropped it because I'm going to stand there for an hour, put it at 400 degrees. I'm going to tell you how I do it. And so, but I do but now you, the great thing about it is that in your book, you tell us how to make the Rodney's White Barbecue Sauce. Tell us about that white barbecue sauce that I'm going to put on this so baked potato. Come on now. That, that Rodney's white barbecue sauce, it was like, hey, you plan to go to Alabama, you need a white sauce. And I'm like, man, you know, we'll get to that bridge when we cross it, you know. And all of a sudden we decided, you know, can, can we make a twist on this sauce? And I was like, yeah. And and we decided to make a, a white sauce with with the South Carolina touch to it. And, you know, that sauce is great on chicken. And in Alabama is where I learned that white sauce is great on chicken. And the first thing I said was, we got to have something for the, the person that loves white sauce. And, and, and here it is, man. And we put it in the book. Man. And then uh, and then I close. I got to close. It's, 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 well, first, I want to tell people, it's a cookbook and it's a story. And so I know I've just been staying on the recipe side of it. But it's also a great read about your life important people in your life, the, 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 the transitional moments that you had in your career. Why was it important not to do a cookbook kind of like memoir? It's kind of like, a, that's what it really is. It's about different perspectives in your life that were very important to who you are today instead of just doing a basic cookbook, Rodney. Well, you know, um, when we were writing this cookbook, uh, my man, Lola's Eric Eli, hats off to this man. He, he walked me through the steps of helping me write this book. And uh, we were just we we're just going over everything. And I said, you know what? That recipe at that time had to do with me being a child at this age. And we started telling a story about each recipe. And in telling that, I was like, yeah, but that I remember that day didn't go as great. And before you knew it, we were talking about my complete childhood. Mm -hmm. And I, and he was like, wow, you know, you you're going to tell this story. And I said, yes. And all of the things I've experienced, good, bad, ugly, I, I said, I think the world should know that, you know, these are things that I've been through. Maybe somebody else has been through the same thing. And hopefully they can learn from this and feel better about their situations to move forward, carry on, to be optimistic about whatever things you encounter. So I decided to tell my story and, 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 and I have absolutely no regrets in telling everything that's in that book. Well, the thing about the beauty of this book is that a little, little background about me is that, uh, you know, during the pandemic is where I met you during the pandemic, during an interview on Money Making Conversation. I bought a, a building in Atlanta and it had this one acre property. And my one of my dreams was I wanted to have my own vegetable garden. 
uh, on my property in my office because I got a, a built-in kitchen and I'm launching my show next month called Rushan's Kitchen. So, you know, I'm going to cook a lot of recipes. When I cook your recipe, I'm going to have your book sitting right there telling everybody this came straight out of Rodney Scott's World of Barbecue book right here. Credit given. That's how I do it on my show. And so I have, uh, I got lettuce back there. I got the cherry and the beefsteak tomatoes. I got okra back there. I got seedless water, a row of seedless watermelons. I got my parsley and I got my cilantro and I got my, uh, collard greens. So. And my jalapenos. Can't forget the jalapenos. Ye- yellow and white onions oh, yeah. as well for my pico de gallo because I'm a Tex-Mex food. Now, so when I saw your book and I saw collard greens, I just smiled knowing that I'll be pulling my collard greens right out my back of my building, bro. Woo! I'm, tell me, Rod, Rodney, you, you said, did you, did you put the Rodney, the, the, the sauce on top of the collard greens? Tell us about that, man. Come on, brother. Mm-mm-mm-mm. So me growing up as a kid, collard greens was not one of my favorites. So I always I always wanted to uh, uh, stay stay true to the barbecue game and the sides that come with the barbecue game. Mm-hmm. And my, my my partner Nick was like, "Hey, dude, you got to put collard greens on this menu." I said, "Dude, I'm not, I'm not a fan of collard greens." <laughs> and he says, "How do you how do you know? If you never had your greens. You need to create a flavor that you enjoy." And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Man, I'm telling you, I don't like no collard greens." But I tried it so many times growing up. And he said, "Well." look at the list of ingredients that we think that you should put in there. And I looked it over and I was like, you know, I'll try this thing. And before you know it, I tasted those greens with that sauce and that pork. And I said, you know, I could do this. And I, I was surprised. The first time I ever tasted it where people could see was on that chef's table. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was like, Oh man, okay. I've been missing out on these collard greens for a lifetime. And I said, we need to put this in the book. We need to put these greens in there and they smell like the way my mama used to make them. Mm-hmm. They, I guess they taste like my mama would make them. <laughs> ham hocks. <laughs> and Got the ham hocks in there, baby. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you know, put that whole ham hock in there. You, do, you know. <laughs> and uh, when, when we did it like that, I was like, okay, these, these are not so bad. And I wanted to make sure and put them in there to hopefully inspire some kid to taste those collard greens growing up. I'm going to tell you something, man. Uh, right now, enjoy talking to you. I also got uh, some cabbages planted out there, so I'm going to do the coleslaw is in the book, Ooh. too. So you you already know I'm going to be, this book going to be like kind of dirty when I finish with it, you know, after this summer. <laughs> That's what I want. But it'll I want be it good dirty. dirty. I want some memories in there, you know? <laughs> hey, well, I want you, some memories for you in that book, mm-hmm. not just nice and pretty on the shelf. Open that thing up. Well, you know, Tom Rodney, uh, I always enjoy talking to you. The second time around, you feel like a friend, man. That's why I, I can't wait till you open the place, man, so I can come down and you come, come out of my office and I show you for real that I wasn't joking. I'm going to show you my garden and show you my kitchen and I'm going to make the cornbread, make your cornbread right in front of you in that cast iron skillet because that's a blessing to be able to have somebody as talented as you that you can show off. He said, that would be showing off to you. You know, I can do this, brother. You know, come on. Thank you, brother. Thank you. But more importantly, man, your book's amazing. Rodney Scott's World of Barbecue. Thank you for coming on Money Making Conversation again, Rodney. Oh, oh man. Thank you for having me. And I'm, I'm going to have to come by that office and let you do the cooking. Absolutely. Don't, don't worry about that. I, I saw the fried chicken with the pepper. and the, Come on, brother. This book here is yes. crazy good. It's crazy yes. good. And I forgot to talk about the banana pudding. But we ain't going to talk about that. We ain't going to talk about that because it's in the book. It's in the book. <laughs> All right, y'all. If you want to hear any of our interviews or see any of our interviews, please go to moneymakingconversation.com. I'm Rashawn McDonald. I am your host. <laughs> 